Jules. Anything interesting happening on the interwebs today? The president posted a very interesting tweet earlier this morning. Interesting, you say? Yes, very interesting. Let me show you how it all transpired. At 6.35 a.m. the president tweeted that Obama had his wires tapped in Trump Tower during the lead-up to his victory in the U.S. presidential election of 2016. Ben Rhodes, one of Obama's former national security advisors quickly fired back at Trump with a tweet saying that no president is allowed to order a wiretap. After that, it was game on, and the big guns came out firing. <laughs> Really, uh, the Obama administration was taking on the form uh, using their uh, version of the FSB, uh, the KGB, mm -hmm. to go and target a candidate. Let me very clear, be clear on this for your audience. Simply because you don't like someone does not give you the right as a sitting president mm -hmm. to do something like that. And Trump Tower, to the best of the Obama administration's ability, was wired for sound. And yes, there is reasons why Mr. Trump did not want to give up his own personal security because he knew that people you know, close to him may very well become collectors mm -hmm. of this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, look, this is, this is completely insane. This is uh, a, an order of magnitude worse than, than, than Watergate, where you've actually used the, the mechanisms of state, the power of a state to go after a sitting, uh, a, a candidate for presidency. And with, 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 by, by the way, they presumed that he was going to lose. So it wasn't even about sure. him winning or losing. This was about trying to gain advantage for his side, in this case, Ms. Clinton. And again, let me be clear on this. This is, a, while the, the, the Democrats keep talking about the Russians, this is Soviet behavior. This is the very thing the Soviet Union would have mm. engaged sure. in mm. back during the Cold Wars. Colonel, what, what are they what are they surveilling on they're supposedly. surveilling on in this case probably inter, quote unquote international contacts which relate to business transactions again projection we know for a fact the Clinton Foundation was indeed taking foreign money a lot of people are recommending that you investigate that they refused but instead here they focused all their energy on going after Trump over the quote unquote international connections and let me be clear on this if there is anything to any of that by now it will have been leaked because you're referring back to what you said on the, the 19 uh, uh, January article Everything is, is taped, and there's going to be tapes of all this stuff, too, and, and the Trump right. administration is going to find them. Exactly. Some of this was used in ways, and look, I, I can't go into how we do things, but I'm telling you, there's very sophisticated collection things that the president is now read in on. He's probably asking some questions like, hey, now that I know this exists, could this have been used against me? So how and do I you think prove that's it? where yeah. it's I mean, all going. Yes. Prove it? Is he, is Precisely. He, is it going to be declassification of some aspect of it? Will it be, I mean, what's the best route potentially? I think potentially you've got to say this is what happened on these dates and leave out the technology specifically, mm. but then go and bring in those accountable. And I, I, dare I say there's probably going to be some whistleblowers coming in to talk about this. This is serious. This is as serious as it gets. Yeah, but, but just to clarify, sure. you think that there is enough evidence that has been given to the president for him to make this claim, no to make this statement. That's not just coming right. from nowhere. Yeah, I, I, I don't doubt for a minute that Mr. Trump has got sufficient, I would say, critical mass of evidence saying there's something really wrong here. And again, as a president, you start you start learning little by little about collection capabilities. There are there is, that you get they have to get right into them. And so naturally, as you start learning about stuff, you start questioning how could this been, have been used against me in some mm -hmm. form? And then you start asking harder questions. So I, I do believe this is one of the tripwires that I've been talking about in the network for the past month. Mm -hmm. the, the, these people have been trying to find ways to get intelligence on the president and his team for purposes of trying to, 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 discredit, to, to, mess it, to discredit him. Right. And I think so, this is what we're seeing here. So yes. we've got to wrap up. But for sure. folks waking up right now, I mean, right. is, is this a game changer moment if what the president has is, is revealed? And, oh, no and, doubt. I mean... We're talking about the potential of indictments of a former sitting president and his staff. And that's, that's never been, it's unheard of. Well, let's first of all dismiss Ben Rhodes' comment as the designated liar for President Obama. He doesn't matter. The bottom line is they did wiretap Trump Tower. They tapped a server that they thought was communicating somehow uh, with Russia. They asked for that warrant and were denied and then went back again, got the warrant, found out there was nothing happening, and then went ahead and continued monitoring it. I mean, this is a legitimate charge and we need a serious investigation. And let me be very clear to follow up what Jim just said. And national security law, you have to have a very high confidence that you're going to do something to tap someone's stuff. And in a situation like this, it has to be even higher. In this case, you had to make a clear, concise case of interrogatories. And let me say something else, and this is something else we had to worry about, is that the president, as we know under President Bush, can use NSA under uh, uh, what we call Title 10 military conditions. And so there's, there's ways of getting around the called oversight rules mm. that, that he could have done. They did get a FISA warrant, so he doesn't have to prove that they wiretapped him. They did wiretap him. The question is, now, how deep does
does this conspiracy go? Mm. Why was President Obama's administration wiretapping a presidential candidate during the campaign? Who else was involved? Was this coordinated with the leaks that were coming out during the campaign, the leaks that came out during the transition, and the sustained attack on the Trump administration sure. by former Obama officials? It seems to me there is a just cause for looking at that. Well, you have to actually, as Jim said, go back and look at everything. You've got to look at all the mechanisms which were employed, what the author, author, authorizations of any, and then those things which fall outside the scope of the president's authority, okay. which shows misuse, and you got to investigate. Uh, everything going on in the intelligence community, in the special operations community, in the Justice Department was all being centrally coordinated by the White House, by President Obama's personal staff. So th there's just absolutely no possibility President Obama was not fully aware of what was going on and, more importantly, that this was a fishing expedition. There was nothing factual to it. So, what do you think? What do I think? Obama's just a minion. I think Trump doesn't understand exactly what he's up against. He's got a lot of shady people around him. He'd be better off if he had people like Schaefer. I think we gotta find Jim D3100 so we can start putting out all the information we have. Hopefully it'll help in some way.